Welcome to the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Welcome guitar geeks at large and welcome TAC family. Today's Acoustic Tuesday Show will no doubt ruffle some feathers because I'm going to address the question, the heated debate, acoustic guitar versus electric guitar. Which one is better? And this all comes from a question that I get asked frequently. And that is by players starting out. And I'm talking guitar players of all ages. Hey, Tone, which guitar should I start on? Should I start on the acoustic guitar or should I start on the electric guitar? And I have two distinct answers to this question. The first of which is start on the guitar that's easiest for you to access. Meaning, whichever one you have access to right now, that's the guitar I want you to start on because starting is really important. My second answer to that question is that it better be an acoustic guitar because the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the entire world. No, scratch that. The acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the entire universe. In fact, I've got five reasons pleading my case for the acoustic guitar being the best instrument of all time. Hands down, no argument. That's a definitive statement, and that's what I think, and here are the reasons I have to support it. In fact, I think we'll do this in a top five fashion because, well, there are five very important reasons, and number one, I think, is the most important. So, starting in at number five of why the, the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the entire world is its self-sufficiency. Literally, you can play the acoustic guitar anywhere and all you need is the acoustic guitar itself. You could do it at a campfire on your front porch. You can take it on a hike and play it out in the woods if you want to. You can play it in your garage, in your room. You can play it on your back porch, front porch. Heck, you can even play it on your roof if you want to. If you take those same scenarios and insert the electric guitar, things look a little different, right? The electric guitar is cool. I'm not saying it's not cool, but it's not the greatest in the world because with the electric guitar, not only do you need the electric guitar, you're gonna need a cable, you're gonna need an amp, and in fact, you probably will need a strap too because some of those electric guitar shapes are a little funky and a little hard to hold while sitting down. And oh yeah, you're gonna need electricity as well. So that rolls out the woods and the campfire. So. That's my number five reason why the acoustic guitar is the best in the world. Let's move on to my number four reason why there is nothing better than the acoustic guitar. And that's because with the acoustic guitar, there is no hiding, none whatsoever, right? With the acoustic guitar, you play, what you play is exactly what you get. If, you, if there's a buzzy note, a fuzzy chord, uh, a string that's not pressed down all the way, you're gonna hear every little nuance, every little detail. It's almost like playing guitar underneath a microscope, not physically underneath a microscope, but you get the idea. Whereas with electric guitar, you get to hide under distortion. It's, it's actually a little bit easier to play. The scale length is shorter, the strings are lighter. So you might be thinking, Tone, this actually makes a case for the electric guitar. But actually, I don't believe you. I, I think the acoustic guitar still wins in this category because you're gonna build better technique, you're gonna build more strength, you're gonna get build, build better note clarity. Overall, you're gonna become a better guitar player because you started on the acoustic guitar. And then, when you do get to try an electric guitar, you can say this, wow, the electric guitar is really easy to play. And that feels good, that feels really good to say. So yes, there's no hiding with the acoustic guitar and that's an absolute boon for your technique as a guitar geek. Let's move on to my number three reason why there's nothing better in the world, in the universe, than the acoustic guitar. And this is an incredible reason because the acoustic guitar is incredibly versatile. I've seen it played lap style. I've seen it played upright. I've seen multiple people playing one guitar. I've seen variations on a guitar. I've seen harp guitars. I've seen guitars with kalimbas, those little thumb pianos on the face of the guitar, a la Trevor Gordon Hall. The acoustic guitar offers so much, and I'll give you two distinct examples. Let's start on the percussion end of things. The acoustic guitar is essentially a drum kit with strings on it. Yes, no doubt. In fact, I have a great example because the whole modern percussive fingerstyle movement is built around the acoustic guitar being so versatile. One of my favorite players in that movement is Antoine Dufour. And he has a great way of using the guitar as, well, bottom line, a drum kit. In fact, here's a quick sample of his playing.
So now that you see the acoustic guitar is used in a percussive way, there's actually other ways it can be versatile. Yes, it's like a Swiss army knife of instruments. In fact, in the effects world, it, it actually <laughs> explodes into possibility, a la Billy Strings. I've seen Billy Strings play live numerous times. I've watched tons of YouTube videos. And yes, I love the tone he gets out of his pure acoustic guitar, his Thompson Dreadnought. However, he can also run that through effects to achieve different tones and different feelings and convey different emotions. And I think he does so in a masterful way. In fact, uh, just so you get a sense of what I'm talking about, here's Billy Strings just jamming out using some effects with his acoustic guitar. As you can see, the acoustic guitar is incredibly versatile from modern percussive fingerstyle all the way to plugging it in and actually running it through effects, which you can do. You can plug your acoustic guitar in, provided it has a pickup, through any effect you want. Some work better than others, but nonetheless, that option is there, making it one of, no, the most versatile instrument in the world. Let's move on to my second reason, reason number two, why the acoustic guitar is the best of all time. The king of the universe when it comes to instruments, if you will, and it's because of the community that surrounds the acoustic guitar. And yes, this sounds a little flowery, and it kind of is, but it's absolutely true. And I actually will use a personal example of this. I mean, first of all, let me just zoom out and say, we're all here together watching the Acoustic Tuesday show. That in and of itself, is a community derived from the acoustic guitar. So that's point for the acoustic guitar. But just this last weekend, I was sitting on my front porch playing guitar. It was a beautiful day out. Every neighbor that walked by, some of them I don't even know yet because Whitney and I just moved into this new house, waved and actually started a conversation from a safe social distance, I should say that. Um, but it just, it sparked conversation. It sparked this kind of camaraderie that otherwise wouldn't be there. The acoustic guitar acts as an icebreaker. Think of any party you've gone to when uh, maybe in a time before you were a guitar player or maybe as a guitar player, maybe you were the one that brought an instrument to a party, to a campfire all of a sudden people start congregating around the acoustic guitar. And that right there is proof the acoustic guitar holds the power to draw in community. And that's one of the reasons I think it is the best instrument in the world. And my final reason, the number one reason why the acoustic guitar is the greatest instrument in the universe is because of the magical power it holds. Now I know what you're thinking. Tone, what are you talking about? Are you talking about casting spells? Are you talking about doing seances? What are you doing here? No, I'm talking about the magical power that an inanimate physical object can hold. And I would claim this, in fact, I'll firmly claim this. The acoustic guitar, the physical inanimate object of the acoustic guitar holds more emotional power than any other physical object in the world. Case in point, think of your washer and dryer. Do you ever look at your washer and dryer and fondly remember those moments you spent with it? Chances are no. And if you do remember a moment with your washer or dryer, it was probably either installing it, what a pain in the butt that is, or if it broke and spilled water all over your floor. Those aren't fond memories. But then I would ask you to do the same thing with your acoustic guitar. And I can guarantee you, you can think of the memories, maybe the people, maybe the situations that that very guitar was a part of. And that's what I mean when this inanimate physical object contains so much emotional weight. It's an incredible phenomenon and one that I absolutely love. And the reason why I think the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the universe, hands down. In fact, I have a personal story that I'm gonna share a little bit later on today's show where I actually cleaned a guitar and I started remembering where this guitar has been and how I'm kind of a part of its story. And I'll share that with you a little bit later, but it just kind of underscores the magic that 
our acoustic guitars hold and the special place they have in our lives. So there you have it, my five reasons why the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the entire world. In fact, if you want a quick recap, we've got self-sufficiency. You, you don't need anything else to play the acoustic guitar other than the guitar. That's it, just the guitar. Reason number four, no hiding. The acoustic guitar puts your technique in playing front and center so you can refine it and ultimately drive to be a better guitar geek. Number three, versatility. The acoustic guitar can accompany you in a number of ways and it's just not strumming and singing. It can be percussive, you can run it through effects, you can play it lap style, you can play it with a slide, you name it, the acoustic guitar is there for you. Reason number two, the community that the acoustic guitar brings about and actually has the power to help congregate. It's pretty incredible and you're a part of it right now on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. And reason number one, the unspoken magic that the acoustic guitar holds in the fact that it is a physical inanimate object, but I would venture to guess and argue until I'm blue in the face that this physical inanimate object holds such an important place in our lives that, well, I would, I would equate it to no other physical inanimate object. So there you have it, my five reasons the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the world, hands down, no argument, end of statement, but I do want your help. I listed only five reasons why the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the world. I wanna hear from you as to why you think the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the world. In fact, if you could be so kind as to leave a comment below and let me know why you think the acoustic guitar is the greatest of all time, I would greatly appreciate it. And I would actually feature your comment on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. All right, this week on Acoustic Tuesday, you've already learned why the acoustic guitar is the greatest of all time. We're also gonna take a look at some must-see acoustic documentaries that, well, you have access to right now. And chances are you may have the free time to watch them. So make sure to check this list out. It's pretty awesome. And you're gonna get a firsthand scoop on my experience, not only with some cleaning products, but I'm gonna invite you into my home, take you along for the ride of me cleaning this guitar. And actually I'm gonna tell you some stories about it as well. Uh, that's all coming up right after this. Guitar. This is the guitar. Isn't this it? is Trigger Jr. Well, this guitar is about 20 years old, I guess, and uh, because it's the tone is uh, so exceptionally good, I've tried to keep it, uh -huh. and it doesn't have a pick guard. So over the years, the pick has worn a hole in there, and uh, it looks kind of bad, but it sounds okay. But this is the one night in, night out you're working with wherever you go. That's it. But it's, uh, I mean, it gets to be a real part of you, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Tony Polo Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 141. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And before I get into that list, I do have an important order of business that of course we have to address, and that is your guitar geek trivia question. Yes, indeed, we have a first for the Acoustic Tuesday show. This is gonna be your first ever true or false question, and I'm so excited to share it with you, but I have to tell you how I came about this question. I was at home reading this book. Uh, I, I wanna say it was 100 years of Gibson's history, and I believe it was written by Walter Carter. And this book is fascinating for those of you who are interested. But I was reading along, and I, I read this section about artists involved with Gibson, and I thought, oh, this is a great question for the Acoustic Tuesday viewing audience. So here's your first ever true or false question. True or false, Gibson created and released an acoustic guitar named the Les Paul Jumbo. I'll read it one more time. True or false, Gibson created and released an acoustic guitar named the Les Paul Jumbo. Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer, and I'm excited to reveal that answer because, well, it's just a piece of guitar history that you need to know. All right, let's move right along. Let me grab a swig of coffee here out of my, my fantastic Rhinelander Hodag mug, uh, given to me by an Acoustic Tuesday viewer, indeed. You know, while we're at home, and we've been at home for a while, right? A lot of us have been stuck at home, kind of doing the quarantine thing, staying safe, staying healthy, as, as healthy as we can, watching out for our fellow guitar geeks and other human beings. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm gonna try playing guitar all day. 
I'm gonna try, this was this last weekend. So I did that and I, I made it a good three hours, okay? I don't recommend this, by the way, because my fingers were really sore, I had to eat, and more importantly, I actually have a wife that, that likes to hang out with me, believe it or not. Um, she likes to hang out with me and spend time and when I play guitar, I kinda just look at her, I almost look past her, like she'll try and talk to me and she's like, I know you're not listening to me right now because you're just playing the guitar. So I rest my case. I still uh, uh, enjoy playing guitar you know, more often than not on the weekends, but an extended a lengthy period of time is great for a gig, but maybe not so much for the home life. So I thought to myself, how else can I integrate the acoustic guitar with just hanging out, well, at home, right? I can't go shopping for guitars right now. I can't necessarily go play a gig right now. So how can I integrate the acoustic guitar into my home life? And I thought, ha, documentaries, my favorite pastime. Seriously, I'm a documentary freak. There's horror movies and then there's documentaries, and I like them both. Uh, horror movies maybe a little bit more, but documentaries are a little bit more family friendly. Hence, uh, my list of five acoustic-centric documentaries that you absolutely must watch. In fact, these documentaries that I'm about to share with you are available to you right now, and a lot of these are available to you for free, which is really exciting because you can just plop them on at any time. You don't have to pay that pesky $4 rental fee on Amazon Prime or whatever whatever you, whatever you platform you watch videos on. That's, that's most of these. There's a couple you might have to rent, but for the most part, these are all free. So let's just go ahead and dig in to these documentaries, shall we? And I'll do this in a top five countdown fashion because, well, I mean, I'm feeling countdowny today. I'm feeling top fivey. I got my five reasons the acoustic guitar is the best in the world. I got uh, five amazing acoustic-centric documentaries. Most of them are acoustic-centric. You'll you'll get my drift. Here we go. Let's dive right into the number five position, and that is the documentary Acoustic Uprising. This is a documentary focused on the modern fingerstyle percussive guitar movement, and more importantly, the community that it actually is is helping uh, to congregate and kind of, uh, uh, it's building this force behind modern percussive fingerstyle guitar. And it's 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 folks that are interested in this, this style of guitar have this deep connection with the instrument. And this documentary features some of my favorite artists, some great celebrities from the acoustic guitar world. I mean, I've seen Khaki King in this, Tommy Emmanuel, uh, Michael Watts, which was so cool to see him in this in this documentary, among many, many others. I, I, uh, 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 Manelli Jamal's in there, and I, I'm, I'm afraid if I start listing them, I'm gonna forget somebody. So I, I don't wanna list every person and leave one person off. But nonetheless, there's some great acoustic guitar luminaries in this film, and it's available for free right now. In fact, they started this about two and a half, three weeks ago, in that uh, they actually made this documentary available to view for free during this whole quarantine kind of pandemic thing. So uh, just so you know what this documentary is all about, let's actually have a look at the trailer for Acoustic Uprising right now. The fundamental principle is to try and make as much noise as possible with one instrument. We're not uh, trying to just strum chords and sing, kind of. We're trying to have a complete piece of music on, on the steel string acoustic guitar. With the acoustic, I am the band. The acoustic guitar has found its way into almost every musical tradition in the world. And it's a shapeshifter. This is a little orchestra with the bass and the melody and the percussive elements. The harmonics, which are really just like these light beams of sound, you know, just like flying up into the heavens. We're seeing this huge explosion of everyone trying to explore the guitar. It's because of certain pioneers in the guitar's past that we are now seeing this range that we never saw before. It's a very haptic experience playing the guitar. It pulses against your chest, it breathes. The sound holds right over your heart. Pretty stellar movie and certainly motivational and inspirational all in the same light. In fact, so if you wanna watch that movie, uh, go ahead and uh, just go to YouTube and search Acoustic Uprising. You'll find the full documentary right there. And uh, it's about, I wanna say it's hour and a half, hour 40 minutes, something like that. But a uh, fantastic way to kind of get in touch with the modern percussive finger style guitar community, but more importantly, discover new artists as well. Um, some really talented folks in that documentary. and. Just so cool to, to realize that 
the acoustic guitar is what's bringing all of these folks together. All right, let's move on to the next documentary. Coming in at the number four position is a documentary that is free. It is available on YouTube and it is entitled Modern Luthier. Disclaimer. This documentary looks like a Days of Our Lives episode. You got the soft focus, you got the dramatic camera angles. It was filmed in the early 90s, so it was kind of along with the vibe of that, of that era of, of documentary and, and TV film. But nonetheless, this documentary features four different luthiers and offers four different perspectives on acoustic guitar building. It's hosted by Will Ackerman, which is so cool. It's like this convergence of all this amazing acoustic guitar synergy. And this documentary, when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know if I can sit through this. This is filmed really bizarrely. It's clearly older. Um, but I'm so glad I sat through it because seeing these different perspectives on guitar building really broadens the scope of what it's all about. In fact, I've selected a small clip from this documentary to kind of prove my point. Uh, right in the intro, each luthier gives a statement about why guitar building is important to them and more and what excites them about guitar building. And it kind of sums up this documentary. And if you dig this little chunk, you'll dig the entire documentary because it is really Really incredible. Some fantastic guitars and great perspectives as well. Here's a clip from Modern Luthier. My greatest joy would be uh, working successfully to design and build a guitar for uh, someone who has a clear notion of their dream guitar. One of the biggest satisfactions I get is creating a new piece of tooling that's going to save me some uh, time and effort and create a better product. At Breedlove Guitars, we're artists and we're very proud of that. But what we really do is make tools for musicians. I feel like we're helping the evolution of the guitar to another phase to hopefully inspire the musicians of tomorrow. And again, that's available on YouTube. Just go ahead and search Modern Luthier and you'll see it. It's about an hour long, uh, 15 minutes dedicated to each Luthier. Now let's move on to the number three position. This is a documentary I just watched last night. Yes, I roped Whitney into this. We sat down, she's like, what do you wanna watch? And we've been watching The Office lately, which has been hilarious. But <laughs> I said, hey, I really wanna watch this documentary. I I'm featuring it on the show that I'm filming tomorrow. Um, what do you think? And she kind of gave me one of these looks like, well, if you want to watch it, and immediately I kind of felt, I felt happy that we were going to watch it, but guilty at the same time because it kind of commandeered what we were watching for the evening. Nonetheless, we watched the documentary entitled Restrung. It was released in 2014, and it's the journey of a bass maker, a nuclear physicist's son who started working at Disney in animation, and then much later in his life became a base builder, a really beautiful base builder. Now, yes, this kind of pushes the boundaries of acoustic guitar because, well, it doesn't feature acoustic guitar at all, but it does give you some insight into Luthery, and more importantly, the creative highs and lows that a Luthier goes through while building, not only a single instrument, but an entire business late in their life. This documentary I thought was really impactful because of the introspection and also the journey of, you know, I think a lot of times as, as guitar geeks and fans of, of, of guitar makers, guitar builders of all sorts, we kind of paint this rosy altruistic picture of how everything's great. They just waltz into the shop every day and they just slap some wood together and make this amazing guitar. And while that's true for the large part, there's a lot of struggles and problems that they deal with, both on the building end of things, but just on the business end of things as well. And I gotta tell you, the luthier featured in this film, um, Wynn is his last name, and I wanna say his first name is Randall, but I, 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 it's escaping me right now. I digress. He, um, he, he has gone through quite, quite the amount of detours on his journey to building bases. Some of them involve the police, some of them involve uh, wood sourcing and other things like that, but uh, he seems to be a very wise soul, and one of the wisest things he says in this movie is kind of a paralleling creativity to a marathon runner, and rather than me try and paraphrase it, I'll let you uh, go ahead and listen in on the documentary itself. Here's a clip from the documentary Restrung.
I was having a conversation with someone about running the marathon and you could go run alongside the marathon runner when he's about five miles from the ending and you could say, hey, it doesn't look like you're having any fun. And I think the marathon runner, if he could even speak, would completely agree, you know what, at this point I'm having no fun at all. But that's the cycle that he has to go through. And any creative project that I've ever gone through, you start out euphorically high about your idea, you hit some low point in the middle where, where you can't believe you ever thought it was a good idea, and it usually all comes together by the end and you have an enormous sense of satisfaction. But just knowing that there's gonna be those tough moments that you go through, that's the experience that kind of helps you get through those tough moments. You've just gone through them before. All right, so that one's available on YouTube. Just type in Restrung Documentary and you'll be able to watch that. It's about 55 minutes long. It end, I, I will say this, it ends kind of abruptly. I wanted it to continue, but it, it was still a great, great uh, uh, hour spent. I really enjoyed the, the film uh, thoroughly because of the kind of perspective on creativity. It was, it, you know, if you zoom out from just guitar building itself and kind of take it as a series of life lessons, it's a pretty fascinating piece of work and, and something I think you'll you'll very much enjoy as a guitar geek. All right, let's move on to the number two documentary I think you should check out during these quarantine times. Uh, this one is free, it's available on YouTube. Um, it's, it's called Making a Guitar and then it's with Michael Greenfield. Michael Greenfield builds beautiful instruments. If you've seen Andy McKee play in the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, he plays Greenfield guitars. So this is a chance for you to step inside the shop of Michael Greenfield and watch guitars being made. It is fascinating. It is a documentary that is patient. It allows you to, it, it's, it's literally like standing in the shop and watching these things happening. It's so beautiful. It's beautifully shot. Uh, some of the minute details, like subtle bending of kerfing and watching it get installed into the sides of the guitar and, and not rushing the clips. I wanna say this documentary is roughly an hour 15, an hour 20 minutes, and it is so cool. This is absolutely for the viewer that wants to see a guitar being built from raw wood to finished product. And also to hear the luthier, Michael Greenfield in this case, narrate the whole thing, is fascinating because you get his perspective on guitar making and the reasons why he does stuff and these little subtleties like, yeah, I laminate the sides because they're more rigid and allows me to build a guitar that's more responsive. Little quips like that that are fascinating for us acoustic guitar geeks. So uh, I would strongly recommend checking out this documentary. Again, it's called Making a Guitar, Michael Greenfield. Uh, it's about an hour, 20 minutes. I cannot recommend it enough. It's just so cool and it, even, even to the degree that the nerdiness of just listening to the sounds, the sounds of sanding, the sounds of clamps being tightened, the sounds of a rasp being used to shape the guitar's neck, it, it's all there. And, and all I can say is that it's a, very, it's a very patient documentary. Not saying you need patience to watch it, but it's patient in that the documentary maker in this case wasn't rushing from raw materials to final product. It was, it was very much an intense deep dive into each step and kind of uh, looking at the beauty and int intricacies of each step. So I can't recommend it enough, especially for, for people like us, us acoustic guitar geeks. Um, it's really fascinating. Let's move on to my number one acoustic guitar documentary that doesn't actually involve an acoustic guitar at all. This documentary came out in 2019. It's entitled Carmine Street Guitars, and it follows a builder who does things the the old way. He in fact he he has this collection of what he calls old New York wood. And just seeing the shop, it's it's so crazy because you look at uh, the documentary Restrung and uh, uh, the the luthier with the last name Win. His shop is so organized. Everything's labeled. Everything's got its place. And then you look at this documentary, and it is just like you look around. And you're like, whoa, this is like a treasure trove of antiques and old pieces of wood and guitars are hanging everywhere and it just seems like a, a complete creative mess is what it looks like. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's kind of, it's a documentary based on uh, a, a builder who kind of is, is, is attached to the old ways and he's kind of carving out his path in the 21st century and, and trying to kind of uh, meet demand based on 
the way that he likes to do things. And I think it's just an interesting perspective. Um, I haven't watched this documentary in its entirety yet, uh, but I do want to encourage you to watch it because I think it's this great cross section again of creativity, uh, guitar geekism, and this community that just kind of the guitar seems to draw in. It's just a beautiful thing, and it just it, it, it I think it's it's so well shot, and it features some really incredible guitar players from various bands. I mean, the guitar player from Bob Dylan's band is in there, um, amongst many other many other session players and other other guitarists. So, uh, without further ado, let's actually take a peek at the trailer for this particular documentary. Again, it's called Carmine Street Guitars. <laughs> Hey, look who's hey, here. Rick. Hey, Jim. You got any guitars for sale? Yeah, we got a few. This stuff, I guess, I've been doing about the last 20 years using the reclaimed New York City wood. What does it say there? 184 Bowery, 1865, yeah. white yeah. pine. I call it the bones of old New York. Hear it? Feels comfortable. <laughs> He's a good splinter guitar. <laughs> I love this guitar, Rick. It's got a great vibe. <laughs> I'll take one. All right. <laughs> you know, I don't know anybody like you. You don't have a cell phone. You don't have the internet at your house. You need to move into the 21st century already. Why? I always really wanted to find somebody that I could pass this on to because it is sort of a lost art. What do you think about this? I think it looks good. There's a part of music that everybody knows, which is what winds up on the record. Yeah. You know? But then there's the invisible part of music that people don't know. And it's like everything from the people who built this guitar and all other guitars mm -hmm. to the people who create the spaces where people can hang out. It's about having a community. That's the way I feel. Yeah. I'm going to charge a lot more for this guitar now. <laughs> <laughs> This one just went up in price, man. It's got Bill Verzell in there. All right, so that one, if you wanna watch that one, it is, I, I believe you do have to rent it. I, I found it on Prime. Um, I don't know if I, I didn't find it on YouTube. I found the trailer on YouTube, but I didn't find the full version on YouTube, but I think it's about a $4 rental fee and I think it's absolutely worth it. Again, I haven't seen the entire thing at the moment, but uh, just judging from what I have seen, uh, I think it's definitely a fun a fun watch for certain. So there you have it, some, some uh, visual entertainment to keep you uh, company during these quarantine times. Again, I know different states are having different restrictions and, and whatnot. I don't know all the details, uh, but uh, if you're staying safe at home, that's a good thing. And uh, at least this will help you pass the time and, and kind of claim your guitar geekism in front of your whole family, if you will. Uh, let's, move on, let's move on to a couple of comments from episode 139. Now, episode 139 was where I offered up my, my five criteria to evaluate a guitar. And also we looked at the McPherson uh, Sable carbon fiber model, as well as uh, a Boucher J.P. Comier artist model and my custom bourgeois OMSC. Uh, some great comments came through. Our first one here comes from Ken Hills and he just simply says this, J.P. Comier is a great guitar player. No coincidence, he has a great custom guitar design in the Boucher. The sound of the Boucher is the seeker for me. Great resonance and the sound really jumps off the instrument. Great show, Tony. Uh, so definitely a vote for the Boucher J.P. Comier artist model there. Thank you for watching, Ken, and thank you so much for your comment. Uh, Daddy0307 chimed in on that show and he says, he added a piece of criteria to my um, five criteria to evaluate an acoustic guitar. He added a number six and he said, should be number six should be have someone else play it for you. It's one thing to love the way it sounds while playing, but I always need to know how it sounds when I'm playing for others. Your songs might need a sound that you can't perceive behind the guitar. And I think this is an excellent point because as you try out the guitar, you might think, man, this sounds so good, but you're the one playing it. A lot of the sound is being projected forward. I think it is a must 
it, it's, it's, it's a very uh, must added step to have somebody, anybody, it could be a buddy you bring along to the guitar store, it could be the, the guitar store employee themselves to actually play the guitar for you. So you can step in front of the guitar and see what it's really sonically offering. Because from the player's perspective, you get one thing. From the listener's perspective, it might be completely different. And I think it's a great added step. So thank you very much, Daddy-O307. Cheers to uh, Chicago. Hopefully you're staying, staying safe and staying healthy. Our next comment here comes from, I'm gonna try my best to pronounce this. Um, I don't know if I can, but I'm gonna do my best. Uh, cheers to Colorado Kyle too for making the coffee today. Uh, keeping me keeping me up, keeping me energized. And uh, I'm gonna try and pronounce this next comment's name or, or um, yeah, here, here I go. Munchener Freyheit. Munchener Freyheit. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> if I say it fast enough, it'll be a joke. Uh, but I, no, 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 dis, no disrespect intended here. Munchen Freyheit says this. Two years ago, I made a pilgrimage to elderly instruments to buy my dream guitar. My two criteria were sound and playability only. A sales associate and I did a playoff of many incredible guitars. I was determined to purchase whatever one within my price limit of $6,000. I left this amazing store with a Santa Cruz F model in Indian Rosewood with a Sitka top. It has such a sweet, powerful sound. It responds to the lightest touch and it rings like a grand piano. I have never regretted this decision. I absolutely love this comment and I cannot thank you enough for leaving it. The Santa Cruz fingerstyle model is a treat. Uh, Matt Chalka of Eddie's Guitars has been releasing these videos on his YouTube channel of him playing his fingerstyle model. And wow, what an incredible guitar. It, it's very apparent, it's lightly built, it responds to the lightest of touches and it is very much like a grand piano. Now Matt's is Moon Spruce over Mahogany and this one here is Indian Rosewood with a Sitka top. So I can imagine the depth and, and power of the bass that's coming from this thing. And if this is, I actually might have played this very Santa Cruz fingerstyle model because I don't, re while I don't recognize, recognize the screen name, Munchen Freyheit, uh, I know that somebody last year brought a, a Santa Cruz fingerstyle model to the Acoustic Life Festival and I had a chance to play it. And I wanna say the best of my memory was Indian Rosewood and Sitka. So if that's you, I've played your guitar and it's, and it's awesome. If that's not you, I've played a guitar like yours and it is indeed awesome. So congratulations and again, thanks for watching and thank you for the comment. Our final comment that I wanna to read today uh, comes from Thomas Nowicki and he says this, uh, this is kind of in reference to the five criteria of evaluating an acoustic guitar. Uh, Thomas says this, Tommy Emanuel once said in an interview with Tony, I believe, that the best guitar to buy is the one you don't wanna put down which I agree 150% with. The problem is that an inexperienced player might not yet be able to figure out which instrument that is. Tony's five criteria is a huge help there. Uh, thanks so much for the comment, Thomas, and I think you'll be delighted to know that, uh, well, this is like a sneak peek before the sneak peek, but next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we'll be spending a lot of time focusing on Tommy Emanuel. Just, just put that, just kind of read that, fold it back up, put it in your pocket. Next week's gonna be a good one. Um, but bottom line, I wanna thank everyone for their comments on that episode. It was so cool to see the response uh, of the Boucher versus Bourgeois because those models were very similar <clears throat> and uh, just so awesome. And I, I, should make a, I should make a correction. I believe uh, there was some confusion on the top of the Boucher JP Comier model. Um, it's, it's actually Adirondack Spruce. I misspoke during the show and called it Sitka. I, I apologize if I, if I misinformed anybody. It, it does indeed have Adirondack Spruce as its top, as most Boucher guitars do. In fact, I believe every single one uh, does. They source some of the most amazing Adirondack Spruce, so I can't believe that slipped my mind. Um, but also I wanna mention that there were great votes for both the Boucher and the Bourgeois. Not only just votes in general, but reasoning behind those votes. And it was so cool to see uh, each of you guitar geeks chime in and say, yeah, I really like the Boucher because 
X, Y, and Z, and I would use it in this situation. To me, that's just so cool to hear the differing perspectives on why you like the guitar. It's one thing to say, yeah, I like that guitar. It's another thing to say, I like that guitar because I love the responsiveness and I love the bass, and I could see myself using it and drop detuning. Like, that's very specific and very useful and educational. So thank you all for those comments. There were also um, questions on why, why on earth would I bring a carbon fiber guitar into the mix when talking about Boucher and Bourgeois? Well, because carbon fiber guitars are just as much guitars as, well, all wood guitars. And I think they are a very viable option to some players. If you don't like them, there's no, there's no rule that says you have to like them. But I actually am starting to grow pretty fond of them. And also their um, ability to be used in places where I simply don't want to take my all wood guitar. So that's, that's why I, I included that carbon fiber guitar. Because I wanted you all to uh, apply the criteria to that guitar as well. Because again, just as much a viable option as any wood guitar, in my opinion. All right, uh, do know that you can support the Acoustic Tuesday show by purchasing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Just visit AcousticTuesday.store. And while you're there, I wanna call specific attention to the Guitarsenal shirt. It is there, and I would love for you to share your Guitarsenal with all of us guitar geeks watching the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's very easy, three simple steps. All you have to do is one, visit AcousticTuesday.store, pick out that Guitarsenal shirt, Number two, once it's shipped to your door, go ahead and put it on, take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And number three, go ahead and submit that picture at AcousticLife.tv, where you can go ahead and upload that picture. There's a submit link in the top menu. Click on that, upload your picture, and tell us a story. Name the guitars in the picture, and I'll feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. It's always so cool to get a glimpse into your guitar collections. No matter how big, no matter how small, it's really neat because I know each one has a story. In fact, Whitney's like, we should, <laughs> just last, this last weekend, been spending a lot of time at home, obviously. Whitney's like, we should do a guitarsonal picture for you. That'd be really fun. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is, this is her chance to realize how many guitars I actually have. Do I want to go down this road or not? Because right now the guitars are split between the studio and the house. If I bring them all to the house, she'll know definitively how many guitars I actually have. And it, I might be a little embarrassed and she might be a little mad. No, she wouldn't be mad. Um, but uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll submit a guitar snow. Maybe I'll submit a guitar snow picture. You know what? I will submit a guitar snow picture because I want I want to bring back the guitar snow. I love it so much. Like I said, each guitar snow has a story, no matter how big, no matter how, no matter how small. There's such cool guitars and, and each of you guitar geeks are so awesome. Uh, I just can't wait to see more of those. So let's move right along. Uh, I wanna get to my experience with this, this um, these cleaning products. I don't know if I've referenced this, but I went through and cleaned an old guitar of mine and I wanna share that entire experience with you. In fact, I'll, I'll bring the camera into my house and show you my whole process of cleaning this guitar, but also an important lesson I learned with it. But first, I wanna uh, touch on some guitar gratitude. Uh, TAC family member and guitar geek, Doug B, uh, took some time out of his schedule and submitted guitar gratitude. And I'm so pumped because it's just, it's, it's a beautiful guitar gratitude. It's short, it's succinct, and it's to the point. And in fact, his, his path, his guitar journey seems to have paralleled mine quite a bit uh, with kind of, well, I'll let Doug uh, uh, share the story with you instead of, I don't wanna steal any of Doug's thunder, that's not fair. So without further ado, here's Doug B sharing his guitar gratitude. Hey there, TAC fam. Doug B here. Um, just wanted to throw out some guitar gratitude for everyone. Uh, really would just like to say that I'm grateful for the guitar, learning the guitar. It's It's been uh, a huge connection in my adult life with my dad. I started goofing around when I was 21. I'm now 34, so it's been a little while and definitely glad I found uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge to, to help me further this this uh, gratitude and um, really just to give me a deeper, uh, deeper connection to music and and just learning new skills as an adult because you know we're not all kids anymore playing sports, organized sports, so it's harder to to um, increase our skills. So glad that I can work on something in my downtime and uh, guitar geeks unite. As I was alluding to, Doug B's journey, his guitar journey, seems to have paralleled mine. Uh, part of my guitar gratitude has been this this relationship that it has formed between me and my dad. And Doug said the very same thing, and he also mentioned mentioned um, something that I thought was interesting. In that, you know, 
at a certain age, we realized we don't really have organized sports anymore to lean on. And that was very much the reason I got into guitar in the first place. So I was so cool to, you know, to have Doug submit that, be a little vulnerable, share that with all of us guitar geeks and, and realize like, hey man, one of the things that I thought was uniquely mine, you know, having sports and just being all sports driven and then not having sports and being like, well, what the hell do I do now? And then I've actually gone into guitar from that uh, to hear somebody else with that same story is so cool. I just, I thought, it's like, this this acoustic guitar community is fantastic. So uh, much appreciation to Doug B for sharing that, taking the time to do that. And if you're thinking, holy smokes, I wanna share my guitar gratitude. Well, it's actually really easy. All you have to do is go to guitargratitude.com. Once you're there, you'll be prompted to submit a video, which you can record right on that very screen at one click of a button. It takes about 60 seconds or less, and all you have to do is click that button and share what you're grateful for. Share what you're grateful for that the guitar has brought into your life. Maybe it's a scenario, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a situation you found yourself in that was only there because of the guitar. Maybe it's the confidence that you've built from the guitar itself. Whatever the case may be, we wanna know and your fellow guitar geeks wanna know as well because not only does it feel good to proclaim your guitar gratitude, it actually inspires others as well to even pick up the instrument in the first place. So again, go to guitargratitude.com, click that single button and record your video. It takes 60 seconds or less, or less and once you're done, you can click submit and it goes right to me and I'll feature it on an Acoustic Tuesday episode. I'd love to hear more gratitude uh, based around the guitar from all of you guitar geeks. I think it's a fun segment that we can add to the Acoustic Tuesday show. All right, speaking of segments, uh, the final one today is one based on some recent cleaning that I did. No, not house cleaning. I actually ignored that uh, and opted to clean a guitar, a guitar that I have long neglected. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit that, but let me set up the whole scenario for you and then I'll take you to my house and we'll, we'll dig into cleaning this guitar. I got sent, uh, this was actually about a month or two ago, some products from Music Nomad. I got their, uh, the premium guitar care kit, which includes the Pro Strength Polish, the Guitar One Polish, the F1 Fingerboard Oil, and then two different cloths, a microfiber cloth for the overall finish of the guitar and then a micro suede cloth. I believe that's what they call it for um, actually using the fingerboard oil uh, uh, and, and using that on the uh, polishing up the fingerboard. I also received from Music Nomad the Frine Fret Polishing Kit, which contains uh, the Frine Fret Polish, uh, three different sized fret guards for different widths of frets, and then also another micro suede cloth to actually use with the, the fret polish. So I went ahead and put all of this stuff to use, and I have to say, just quite honestly, I am over the moon about Music Nomad and their products. Um, I am not endorsed by them. This is not a, this is not a paid thing by any means. Um, I am seriously impressed with their products, and I am like, blown away with the results. And speaking of the results, let me take you step by step on the way that I cleaned this guitar and actually brought it back to life. So let's uh, let's go ahead and head to my house where I'll show you how I clean this Martin HD35 using Music Nomad's product suite. Here it is. I've been a really crummy guitar owner. I've let my Martin HD35 sit in the case all too long. It's been properly humidified, but the frets are showing signs of tarnish, the strings are dead, and overall it's just kind of gunky and it looks dingy. So I'm gonna put the Music Nomad product suite to the test. I've got the Frine fret polish, I've got the uh, Pro Strength guitar polish, I've got the Guitar One polish, and I also have their F1 fingerboard oil that I'm gonna use to make this guitar look nice and shiny, and hopefully it'll sound better too, because it just kinda sounds dull and kinda ugly right now. So let's give them a test. First things first, I have to remove all of the strings. By taking all of the strings off, it'll give me full access to the fretboard, the top of the guitar, and all the places that ultimately get super, super gunky. And speaking of gunky, look at the top of this guitar and look at the frets. They're super, super tarnished. So I got to start things off by scraping off the fretboard, getting rid of some of the gunk, and then I got to polish up the frets with this Frine fret polish from Music Nomad. One by one, I go down the frets and shine them up. Now 
it's on to the fingerboard oil. First I start with the bridge and then I move to the fingerboard to get it nice and healthy looking. And you can see the shine, it's incredible. It really brought this fingerboard to life. Now on to the guitar polish. First I start with the face of the guitar, then I flip it over and move on to the back of the guitar. This brings out some of the surface scratches and then ultimately I finish things off with a couple sprays of polish on the top, back, and of course the sides as well. With the guitar polished up, it's now ready for new strings. For this guitar, I've chosen the Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension Strings because I love the way they sound and I love how long they last as well. On the ball end of each string, I put a little bend, and this is to ensure that the end of the string actually sits nice and firm against the bridge plate, so there's no weird rattle or buzz generated from the string's ball end. I do this for each of the six strings. Now on to the headstock of the guitar. I put a little graphite in the nut slots and then I thread the string through and then wrap it over itself to lock it in place. Once I do that, I wind the tuner up tight and once I've reached the desired tightness, I go ahead and snip the string end. Of course, I do this for each of the six strings and then once I go to the other side of the headstock, everything reverses, making sure that the winds always go towards the inside of the tuner. <laughs> Well, I am absolutely blown away. Uh, that's a wrap for my little cleaning session. I started when the sun was up, the sun is now down. That's how dirty this guitar was. But honestly, the Music Nomad products functioned absolutely flawlessly. This guitar not only looks good and performs well, it actually feels good. And I know that sounds a little bizarre, but the polish gives it this nice kind of slippery sheen and it just, it even smells good, I mean, to be quite honest. But all the way from the, uh, the frying fret polishing kit to the fretboard oil to the actual polish I used on the instrument, this guitar has totally, uh, I've, it's breathed new life into this guitar. I'm, I'm absolutely speechless. I haven't played this guitar in quite some time because it was just kind of not fun to play. Uh, but wow, the products breathe new life into this instrument and I am just, tickled pink. So I'm going to spend the rest of the evening playing this guitar. Thanks, Music Nomad. Thanks, Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension Strings. Um, what a combo. I'm so delighted. Now I'm going to go get reacquainted with this old friend. So here I am like a week later after cleaning this guitar, and that's the only guitar I've played for like a week. I, I have absolutely fallen back in love with my Martin HD 35. And one of the things that I wanted to bring around and kind of have a, a full circle moment is, you know, one of the things I mentioned as my top reason why the guitar, the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the world is the, is the magic it holds, the stories that this inanimate physical object has behind it. And my Martin HD 35 has those very stories. And as I spent time cleaning that guitar, in fact, Whitney was, was sitting there reading her book and watching me kind of obsess and, and go over each little piece of minutia and, and polish every little thing. She said, when did you get that guitar? And it started, I started to think about it and I thought, wow, I got this guitar. I, I, I think it was in 2006, 2007. And uh, I was working in Chicago at the Old Town School Music Store and I, I put it on layaway. And that entire summer, I would find things around the house that I wasn't using. Um, it could be, I mean, I'm talking anything, old shirts, you name it. And I sold it on eBay to pay for that guitar. And it was about a three or four month process of just me listing all this stuff on eBay, finally selling it off. And then I remember the day I got to take that guitar home. I don't think I slept a wink that night. I played it all damn day. It was the first guitar, and all damn night for that matter, um, it was the first guitar that I started to, to kind of practice some, well, modifications on, and uh, I, I actually replaced the pick guard. At the time, Martin was using these weird pixelated pick guards, and I just, I didn't enjoy it, so I took the pick guard off. I put a, a Grevin pick guard on it, or a Tortoise pick guard on it, and it was the guitar I, I played my first bluegrass gig with. It was the guitar that uh, I, I just learned so much about. It was the guitar that moved from Chicago to Montana with me. Um, it's just been a friend. It's been along for the journey. And, and, and Whitney asking me this question made me think, man, the acoustic guitar is truly a magical thing. It, it just, this guitar is, has, been, has been a friend to me. It's just been there all along. And it, man, if I could just get this guitar to speak other than playing chords and having it sound awesome, because now it does sound awesome, as you saw. Um, I just would love to ask it, hey, how did it go for you? How was your experience? <laughs> because there were times when, gosh, I just, I didn't play it. You know, life was, was 
going crazy and, and I didn't play it. And then I fell into this routine and holy smokes, uh, what a beautiful guitar. But you know, I let it, I let it kind of, I neglected it. I got more guitars. I was get excited about all these other instruments that I have and that one didn't get the call as much. And then seeing it kind of fall into a little bit of disrepair was sad, but then revitalizing it was, it was a great moment. So it was this cool full circle moment where I had a chance to reflect on the guitar, it's, its specific spot in my life and kind of the journey that I've gone on with this very guitar. So I wanted to share that with you all because uh, number one, the cleaning products were, were awesome. Uh, they functioned so well, easy to use, made the guitar just beautiful as you saw. But number two, I wanted to share this with you because it, it was kind of proof that, man, the acoustic guitar is magic. It's just, a, it's, it's an incredible instrument that holds such emotional weight. Um, it's an instrument that you literally hug. You, you hug, it's like a friend you hug every day. Um, so I wanted to share that with you because I think it just underscores the point that, well, the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the entire world. And I'm, I don't think I even have to open up a debate on that. I think it's just fact. I actually think it's fact, pure fact, 100% fact. Just as much as the Hodag exists in the forests of Rhineland or Wisconsin, the acoustic guitar is the best instrument in the universe and will always be. With that said, let me get back to your Guitar Geek trivia question. Our first ever true or false question here on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I do believe that is correct. And this, again, just to kind of give you the context of where this question came from, I was reading a, a book entitled 100 Years of the Gibson uh, 100 Years of Gibson Guitar. Uh, the author was Walter Carter. There's a couple of books with a name similar to this, and I, I own them all. So if I don't have the facts exactly right, I'm sorry, I'm just confused because I got like three different books at home. But I know the, uh, the author was Walter Carter is Walter Carter. And uh, uh, this I read this paragraph and I thought, this is perfect for the Acoustic Tuesday show. So here was your true or false question. True or false, Gibson created and released an acoustic guitar named the Les Paul Jumbo. I'm gonna read that again. There's a lot of key phrases in here and I'll highlight them. True or false, Gibson created and released an acoustic guitar named the Les Paul Jumbo. Well, if you answered true, you're correct. In 1968, Gibson issued or reissued several Les Paul models and wanted Mr. Paul to put his name on an acoustic guitar. Interestingly, the J160E that the Beatles are seen playing early in their career was originally designated to be a Les Paul acoustic model. However, Les would not put his name on the J160E. Therefore, in 1969, Gibson came up with a brand new model to bear the Les Paul name, the Les Paul Jumbo. The sales were dismal to say the least. <laughs> Gibson records state that 43 were sold in 1971, three were sold in 1972, and three were shipped in 1973, the guitar's final year. The guitar sold for $610 and came with a deluxe black Gibson case lined in red velveteen. Very bizarre looking guitar. The sound hole was actually shifted down towards the bridge positioning it a little bit lower on the body uh, to make way for a, a pickup up towards uh, the bottom end of the fingerboard extension. Very interesting looking guitar. Needless to say, it certainly didn't last in Gibson's lineup. All right, well, with that being said, with that newfound knowledge as a feather in your cap, let's take a quick sneak peek into next week to see what's gonna happen. I already alluded to it, but yes, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we're gonna discuss the main acoustic man. Yes, indeed, Mr. Tommy Emanuel will be our main focus of next week's Acoustic Tuesday show. Basically, you gotta be there or be square. And I can assure you, if you're an acoustic guitar geek, you will be there because this will be right up your alley. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a deep dive on anything I've ever featured on the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for being a guitar geek and thank you so much for just being, well, downright awesome and enthusiastic about, well, we now know what is the greatest instrument in the entire world, the acoustic guitar. Thanks so much and I'll see you next Tuesday. Guitar Geeks Unite, cheers. Stop.